In this What's Sold video, we are gonna talk about some of the things that just took forever to sell for me. These are things that you should avoid while you are out thrifting. So you are welcome for doing the work, for finding the things, for listing them, and for letting you know these are not it. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about everything that sold for me in one week. And actually, I'm home right now, kind of in the early afternoon. Um, I just proctored the PSAT at my school. So um, it's kind of like intense. And right after that, they let us go because the kids are released from school anyway. So I got to eat lunch at home and now I'm filming in my kitchen, which is kind of exciting. It's kind of cool to just try filming in new spaces. There's a lot of natural light here. I have the windows open. It's quite heavenly. Like I'm not even going to lie. So I'm super excited to be filming here in my new house, in this new space for you today. And like I said, we're going to talk about all of the things that sold for me in a one week span, most of them kind of crappy, some like okay, but most of them like not the best things. Um, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you enjoy what sold videos, definitely make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that YouTube lets you know whenever I upload more content like this. And let's just jump right in. So starting with February 27th, which was a Monday on Poshmark, I sold this skirt by BB Dakota, which you know, like this is a brand that retails for a lot. I just feel like I'm never able to get a ton for it when I resell it. But it was this tweed, very like neutral colored wool blend, short pencil skirt in a size six. I purposefully did not say the color of the skirt because I, I didn't know. <laughs> like it could have been interpreted as gray or taupe or beige or I don't know. It was one of those in between. So I just called it neutral, but it sold for $14. It came to me in a palette of stuff from another reseller because she just had too much inventory. So she sold me a pallet's worth. And so I had $3.92 into that item and I made a net profit of $7.13. So first thing to avoid, BB Dakota tweed skirts. You are welcome. Second thing that sold for me this day also on Poshmark was this Nike Golf Tour Performance Therma Fit Blue Quarter Zip Fleece Pullover in a Men's Extra Large. You know, I get so much Nike from wholesale pallets or from other resellers or in thread up boxes that I don't typically go out and buy very much of it myself. However, this I did pick up at my local Goodwill. I paid $4.35 for it, I believe. There was some sort of sale at that Goodwill that day. Maybe it was like a Friday and I got 20% off. I had a coupon or something, but I picked this up because I thought the price was good and I looked up comps and comps were pretty good for this. It did end up selling for $29, which I thought was pretty good. So I made a net profit of $18.85. This, you know, like I said, was Nike Golf, which I think can do pretty well. And because this was a pullover, it wasn't just like a polo or a t-shirt or something kind of basic like that. I think that's one of the reasons why it did a little bit better than maybe other typical Nike pieces. So I definitely would pick that up again in the future. And that only took maybe under a week to sell. So that was great. Moving on to Tuesday, which was February 28th on eBay. I sold this banana Republic factory black 100% wool pea coat in a men's size medium. This sold for $70. So this was actually, I think a pretty good flip. And I do think that outerwear by brands like banana Republic can do really, really well. So if you're able to pick it up for cheap enough, I think it's worth the pickup. This one I only had $2 into because a friend of mine who just had so much clothes was like, I don't, wear three fourths of this. So I'm just going to give it to you to resell before I moved to Chicago. And I was like, great. I sent him some money for the clothes that he gave me and it came out to like $2 a piece. So I made a nut profit on that pea coat of $56 and 34 cents. So that I would say should be on a different list. You know, the kinds of things that you should pick up. But don't worry, we got some more crappy sales coming your way. On Depop, I sold this CJ Banks, Christopher and Banks hand embroidered bird cardigan in a size extra large. So CJ Banks is not typically a brand, you know, Christopher and Banks, CJ Banks, they're all kind of the same thing. Um, it's not a brand that I pick up when I'm at the thrift store. However, you can find really darling pieces like this if you look carefully enough. And because they're so kind of like niche and you can call them cottage core. And because of that, even though the brand 
brand itself is super whatever and not really worth a ton, I think you can market pieces like this to the Depop crowd, to people who are looking for vintage or for people who are looking for just kind of that fun like cottagecore look. Um, and so this I thought was a pretty cool piece that I got from a reseller who didn't want to resell clothes anymore. So I bought all of her clothes off of her. And even though like initially I would say this wasn't a good pickup, it ended up being okay. And I think again, like I said, the key was marketing it as like cottage core, as like a novelty print, that sort of thing. So this actually sold on Depop for $30 and I only had $2 into it. Now on platforms like Depop and Kitizen, I do offer free shipping because that's kind of the culture there on platforms like Poshmark and eBay and Mercari, I make the buyer pay for shipping. But um, on Depop, I did pay for shipping. So I still ended up with a net profit of $15.18. And I don't know, I, I was kind of here for that cardigan. I thought it was pretty cute. Moving into March, we'll talk about March 1st, which was a Wednesday. On Poshmark, I sold this Jay McLaughlin off-white crochet sweater with a 3 4 sleeve. It was made of combed cotton, which I've never heard of before, um, but that's what it said on the tag, and it was in a women's size extra small. Jay McLaughlin is one of my favorite brands to resell. I don't find it too often, but I find it often enough to know kind of like what is a good pickup and what maybe isn't. This I don't know, like this was okay. It seemed like maybe it was a little bit older of a piece. There was a little bit of wear on the piece itself. Part of me was like, did this shrink in the wash? I don't know. I mean, it was an extra small, but this came from that same reseller who um, just had too much clothes and sold me a pallet of it. So I had $3.92 into this. It did take a while to sell. It took, you know, months and months, I would say, but it did finally sell for $30. So I made a net profit of $20.08. But especially if you can find the Jay McLaughlin pieces in their Catalina cloth, that's what they're most known for. Those pieces can do really well. I'm talking like basic t-shirts in that Catalina cloth can sell for like $40, $50. It's kind of crazy. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. This was not something that I would have picked up at the thrift store, but it was something that came to me from the reseller who didn't want to resell clothes anymore. I just went ahead and listed it mainly because it was plus size. I mean, I wouldn't say it was cute, but it was like the kind of thing that I could see people wanting in their wardrobe. So it was by the brand Cabin Creek, which again is not a brand that I typically pick up when I'm at the thrift store, but it was this green plaid button up shirt in a women's size 22W. It did have that wrinkle free technology, which people love. Um, it sold for $13 on eBay. I had $2 into it. So I made a net profit of $10 and 43 cents. On Thursday, which was March 2nd, I sold zero things. It was not a good sales day because I sold nothing, but the weekend was actually pretty great. So Friday, which was March 3rd, on Poshmark, I had a few sales. The first one being this Jane and Delancey green and blue plaid long sleeve tunic in a plus size 2X. This piece surprised me because when I looked up comps for this brand, they seemed to be very whatever, but as soon as I listed this, it got a ton of attention and it sold within a few days of being listed for $21 on Poshmark. That was something that I had gotten for free from America's Thrift Supply. They reached out and asked if I would do an unboxing of a micro bale of dresses. The box was quite honestly pretty atrocious, but there were a few pieces that I was able to salvage and list, this being one of them, and I made it a profit of $16.80. So I don't know if all Jane and Delancey is the kind of stuff that you need to be picking up, but maybe they just do really well on their plus sizes. This is literally my first time trying out the brand, so I can't speak from a ton of experience, but I do feel like I would take a chance on their plus size pieces again, especially if I'm somewhere like the bins or something like that. You guys, there's just like the most glorious breeze coming in. Like I'm just so happy right now filming here. Ugh. Okay, but moving on. The next sale was this new with tags loft peach eyelet sleeveless cottagecore dress. It was in a size small, it was fully lined. I don't know that it's like really cottagecore, but I just put it in there because I think it's passable as cottagecore. But this sold for $23. It came to me in that wholesale palette from a fellow reseller. So I had $3.92 into it and I made a net profit of $14.48. Loft is one of those brands that I personally don't pick up 99% of the time that I see it. There's so much Loft listed on all reselling platforms. And so it's really hard to get your Loft to stand out from anyone else's Loft. And it's really hard to make good money on Loft because there are a lot of people selling it for dirt cheap. So again, if it weren't in this wholesale palette, I would have never picked this up. 
but because it was new with tags, because you know it arrived at my house, I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and list it, try to make some money. And I did, you know, I did okay with that. The next thing to sell was this pair of new with tags, Judy Blue Slim Fit Black Distressed Cuff Jeans with a high rise in a size seven or like a waist size 28. This one, let me look up where I picked this up because I did have some money into it. I want to say I got this out of Plato's closet, but let's just figure out for sure. I've got my laptop in front of me. Um, they, it sold for $40, which is pretty good. That's pretty typical for me of Judy Blue jeans. Um, and these were new with tags. So, you know, normally I would get a little bit more, I feel like, but that's okay. Yeah, I did get this at Plato's Closet. I got it last summer. I think it took me a month or two to get it listed. And I had $18 into those. So honestly, there was a time when Judy Blue was doing so, 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 so well and paying 18, 20, even $25 for it sometimes was okay. I think $18 is too much to be paying for Judy Blue nowadays, especially in styles like, you know, skinny, because that's not as popular of a style in denim as it used to be. So you just have to be kind of like careful when it comes to how much you're willing to spend on Judy Blue. Because I spent $18, my net profit on those jeans was only $14. But if you can pick them up for like $10 and under, I think they're still a good pickup especially if they're new with tags like these were. On eBay, I sold this Greg Norman white play dry short sleeve golf polo shirt in a men's size medium. This sold for $14.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. And I had $3.92 into that because that was also something that came to me from that wholesale palette from a fellow reseller. Greg Norman, I've learned, will sell. I personally sit on it for a while. It's kind of similar to Loft in my opinion where there's a lot of Greg Norman on reselling platforms. And so, you know, what's gonna make your short sleeve polo stand out from someone else's? Nothing. It's really almost a game of who's got the lowest price or who's got the best pictures or who's got whatever. And so for that reason, it's not a brand that I actively pick up while at the thrift store. But again, this arrived at my house in a pallet. So I listed it. I made a net profit of $8.28. But that's another example of something that personally I would not be picking up at the thrift store because I just don't know that it's worth your time and energy, especially because you're going to sit on it for a decent amount of time, most likely. The next thing to sell was over on Depop. It was this vintage Claybrook, that was the brand name, geometric print multicolor wool blend sweater in a men's size large. So a few months ago, I was sent a box from Fleek. Fleek is kind of like, they call it like wholesale for vintage sellers. Um, you're buying from other people from all over the world who have stockpiled vintage clothing and they usually sell it to you in lots. I think you can buy individual pieces as well, but for the most part, people are selling vintage in lots and Fleek had reached out to see if I would partner with them in a video. Um, they'd give me credit towards a box and I'd do an unboxing and all that kind of stuff. I picked out a men's vintage sweater box with 25 sweaters in it, and it was amazing. It was so good. Now, to be honest, I have not tried Fleek since then, so I can't speak for any of their other boxes, but that one experience was really great. And because I had so much fun listing and photographing those vintage sweaters, when I saw this at a Goodwill in a town about an hour away from me, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get it. Cause it really reminded me of those vintage sweaters from that Fleek box. Um, and it did pretty well. It sold for $34 on Depop. That's kind of where I thought that this would sell because that's where this kind of stuff does really well. Um, I only had $4.99 into it from that Goodwill. So I made a net profit of $16.08 because remember, I do pay for shipping when it comes to Depop sales. So because I had to pay for shipping um, and when you factor in Depop's fees and my cost of goods, that net profit comes out to $16.08. But because of that box and because of the experience that I now have from selling the items in that box, I feel like I have a better understanding of what kind of vintage sweaters for men sell well, you know, and the cool thing too is like women will definitely buy those sweaters too for themselves. They'll, they'll wear them as like oversized pieces. Um, so they're really fun pickups and definitely something that I'm on the lookout for now. Moving into March 4th, which was a Friday on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Vionic Antonia tan leather slip on wedges in a size eight and a half. I also put the words classic and neutral in the listing title in case people were looking for classic neutral shoes. I don't know. I don't know what people are searching for on Poshmark, but I want to give my listings every opportunity to be found in search. So those sold 
sold for $34. I had $5.99 into them from a local Goodwill, and I made a net profit of $21.21. Vionic is definitely one of my favorite shoe brands to pick up. I feel like sometimes I sit on it, but usually it moves pretty quickly, and I just feel like it's got really great resale value. So if you find Vionic for a good price, I think they're definitely a good pickup. The next thing to sell was this vintage Rock Mount Ranch Wear, the Westerner Blue Pearl Snap Button Shirt in a men's size extra large. I don't know. We don't have a lot of like Western wear where I live. Like that's not the typical kind of stuff that you find at our thrift stores. I'm assuming if you live in places like Texas or Arizona, like I bet there's a lot more of that stuff in those states. But here in the Midwest, we don't find a lot of this kind of stuff. This I got from the reseller who didn't want to resell clothes. So I, got, you know, I pulled it out of the box and I was just like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, I just have so little experience with Western wear. I think I listed it kind of high though, because I think comps showed that like this brand, the style could do pretty well. I think I had this listed for like $35, but someone sent me a $20 offer and I was like, Yep, you can have it. Like, I just have so little confidence in this kind of stuff that I just, I just wanted to move it. I didn't want to lose that, you know, chance to make the sale and then sit on it for like two more years and lament at the fact that I could have offloaded this so long ago, but instead I got greedy over $15. So I went ahead and accepted the $20 offer. I had $2 into it from the reseller who didn't want to resell clothes anymore. I made a net profit of $14 and I'm just going to say it. I don't like to sell Western style clothing, nothing against it, nothing against people who wear that kind of stuff. It's just not for me. I don't know very much about it and I don't really want to learn about it either. So the next thing I saw was over on eBay. It was this dress by Talbot and it was part of the Oprah magazine collection. So I don't know. I just imagine Oprah sitting down with Mrs. Talbot. Is that a person? I don't know. And them just being like, hey, Oprah's favorite things, Oprah's favorite dresses, Oprah's favorite Talbot's pieces. And they're like, yep, that sounds really good. And so a collaboration was born. That's how I picture that going down. But it was this pleated floral dress in a women's size eight. It was fully lined. I picked that up at a local consignment store. They were having some sort of sale. So I got that for $6.30. I did not check comps while I was in the store because I just love selling Talbot's. And I have a lot of really good luck selling Talbot's dresses. Um, this particular dress, the comps for it were not very good. I still listed pretty high. I think I listed it for like 35 or $30. And every day, something that I do is I will end listings on eBay that are going to go ahead and relist themselves because it's been 30 days. So I will end those listings. You know, there's an average of like five to sometimes like 50, <laughs> but I'll end those listings. And then I will sell similar all the ones that I just ended before I submit those listings to be listed again. However, I will go through and drop prices on items that maybe I just was a little too ambitious with the pricing. I will go through and maybe tweak some of the listing title words or something like that. I will allow offers if I had do not allow offers on. The first month I don't allow offers and then after that month has passed and you know I'm relisting an item, then I'll go ahead and turn on the allow offers little button thing. Um, so I do all that stuff and so this dress had gone through maybe a couple months worth of me, you know, ending the listing, selling similar, dropping the price a little bit. So it had gotten down to $27.99. It was promoted at 3%. And so I made a net profit on that dress of $16.58, which being able to sell that dress for $28, I think was still pretty good, especially like I said, given the comps. I think there were people letting go of this dress for like $18, $15. So I was kind of scared, but I was able to move it for 28. I was very happy with that. The next thing to sell was a good sale but man, I sat on these for a long time. So it was this pair of Paul Green green suede slip on ankle booties in a size nine with a stacked heel. Okay, I'm looking, I guess I didn't sit on them for that long. It just felt like a really long time. So they sold for $49.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I only had $2.50 into them because I got them at the Goodwill bins or like the Goodwill outlet in Seattle when I went last summer. That's why it feels like I've had these for forever because 
because I, I do think I listed these pretty quickly after getting back to the Midwest, after you know I visited my parents. So I feel like these have been listed for close to a year, like at least eight to 10 months. And I do think that there was a decent amount of people liking the item and watching the item. They, you know, they just never sold. And so that's why it just feels like I've had these for forever. Um, those were promoted as well at 3%. And so I made a net profit of $36.28. Paul Green is a good brand. It's a good shoe wear brand. It's sold at places like Nordstrom. But I personally sit on shoes by Paul Green for quite some time. So... I don't know. I mean, I'm still going to pick it up when I see it, but I'm just going to have a more realistic expectation of what, you know, is going to come of that sale and how long I'm going to have to sit on those shoes. So um, just passing that information on to you as well, in case you're frustrated by how long you've been sitting on your Paul Green shoes. The last day of sales that we'll talk about is Sunday, which was March 5th. I sold another Greg Norman piece. This piece was part of their play dry line, which I think is kind of like Nike's dry fit. Um, it was this orange short sleeve golf polo shirt in a men's 2XL. It did, you know, feature that moisture wicking technology and it sold for $13. So like I said, Greg Norman will sell. It's not going to sell for a ton and most likely you're going to sit on it for longer than you want. I had $3.92 into that because believe you me, I did not buy that at the thrift store. It was something that came to me in that palette. So I made a net profit of $6.13. The next thing to sell was by the brand Draper James, and it was this new with tags, lipstick red, solid flutter dress in a size 10, um, and it had ruffles on it, and I put the word party in there because, you know, I feel like you could wear this to a party, I don't know. This sold for $50 on Poshmark, and I think that that was my full asking price, which was really nice, especially given the fact that I feel like that had been listed for at least six months, so it felt good to finally move that out. That I only had $4.99 into. I got it at a local consignment store um, when they were having some sort of sale. So I made a net profit of $35.01. Draper James is a brand that Reese Witherspoon started with um, someone else, I don't remember who. It used to do really well. It still does pretty well. I mean, $50, that's, that's not bad. It is a new with tags dress, but you know, that's not bad. I can't remember if this is correct or not, but I feel like Draper James is now in collaboration with like a department store. And I want to say that that department store is Kohl's or something like that, which means now we got to be really careful about which Draper James we pick up. And in general, I feel like that lowers the value of a brand when they partner with a department store. Just be on the lookout for those brands that, you know, used to stand alone, but now they're working with a department store. That's usually bad news for us as resellers when it comes to that brand. Case in point, Elizabeth and James, that is Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's brand. Brand. It used to be a standalone brand and it was very expensive. I mean, even when it was a standalone, I feel like the resale value was kind of like meh, but then they started working with Kohl's and that's when things really went downhill for that brand. And I don't pick it up anymore because I don't want to take the time to figure out if it's regular Elizabeth and James or the Kohl's Elizabeth and James. And even if it is regular, it just doesn't do as well as it used to. So like I said, I typically leave it behind. The next thing to sell was this pair of jeans by DL1961. They were the Emma Sky style and they had a raw hem. They were like jeggings or leggings. Um, they were in a size 26 and they featured a mid-rise. I used to really like picking up DL1961. I hate it now. <laughs> like I sit on this brand forever and not only do I sit on it, but like nobody likes them. Nobody watches them. Like they just sit there and take up space. And so this is a brand that I don't really pick up anymore unless I can pick it up for like a penny. I mean, maybe I'll pick it up for a penny. These finally sold for $28. I had $6 into them from a local consignment store. So I made a net profit of $16 and 40 cents. I will say too, you know, these are a little bit more outdated of a style. People are just not shopping for jeggings and, you know, skinny jeans as much anymore. People, who still like to wear skinny jeans like I still wear skinny jeans but I have all the skinny jeans I need you know like I don't really need to go out there and buy anymore so I do feel like the skinny jean market has gone down drastically um, and I am finding more luck with my more relaxed fit jeans like boyfriend fit jeans that sort of thing um, and not only that but those are kind of harder to find because I feel like people are snatching them up really fast. The next thing to sell was this pair of Cabela's steel shank slip-on duck boots in a women's size 7. 
I've had these for a really long time. I want to say at least a year, if not longer. They finally sold for $40, which again, I think was my full asking price, but they just took forever to sell. So, but I had $5 into those from a local thrift store. And so I made a net profit of $27. In general, I feel like duck boots can do really well. Steel shank or like steel toe boots can do really well. So I thought for sure the combination of the two was gonna be like, you know, this is it. Like this is gonna sell so fast. They did not. And I maybe had them priced too high. I don't know what the issue was, but I sat on those for quite some time. On eBay, I sold this Talbot's wool and alpaca blend gray pencil skirt in a women's size 12. That sold for $25. I only had $1.87 into that from a local consignment store during one of their sales. So I made a net profit of $19.96 on that skirt. I will usually pick up these kinds of like career pencil skirts from places like Talbot's, Banana Republic, if I can get them for really cheap because they do usually sell between that like 20 to $30 mark. Um, and if I'm paying very little for them, I will usually pick them up, especially because they're so easy to photograph and list. Um, it's kind of a no brainer. They do tend to sit for some time. So again, that's something you have to take into consideration. If you only like fast flips, then personally I would maybe stay away from pencil skirts because usually they're not a fast flip, but I personally do enjoy selling those. On Kittizen, I sold this Eddie Bauer gray silver lightweight puffer jacket in a youth size extra large. It did have a hood and it was pretty dirty. Like there were stains all over this thing. But there was um, a family that used to go to my church and the daughter, I've known her since she was in like elementary school. And when she got to high school, she started watching my YouTube channel and she started selling on Poshmark, which was so cool. She would text me and be like, Auntie Becky, I have some more questions for you about Poshmark. And it was just the cutest thing. And I think it's so cool that there are kids out there making money, you know, through reselling. And there are a lot of teenagers, even on Instagram, or you know, they have YouTube channels who, this is what they do instead of working at like a fast food restaurant or something. And I'm not knocking fast food restaurants, but I'm just saying, I think it's really cool that teenagers have figured this out as well. But she is now a freshman in college and she reached out and said that she didn't wanna take all of her stuff to her school. She was going to a school out of state and therefore she asked me if I wanted all of her inventory. Of course I said yes, it wasn't that much stuff, but it was, you know, a handful of things. And I think also some of the things in that pile that she gave me was just stuff from like her home, like things that her siblings had outgrown. I wonder if that was the case with this jacket. I don't know, but I had no money into this and it sold for $20. I made a net profit of $11 and seven cents once you factor in shipping and citizens fees. And that was really cool because of who it came from. And because of the idea that maybe I taught someone <laughs> something about reselling, like it's very humbling and very cool. The last sale that we'll talk about was over on Shopify. This went out to a viewer, and if I'm saying your name incorrectly, I'm so sorry, but to a viewer named Niz. So thank you so much. So on my website, I actually, I don't really do like merch and stuff, but I don't really do like merch and stuff, but the only thing that I have that's like mine, if you will, um, I have these two mugs. This one says thrift ship sip with me and I think that this is the one that she got um, and really small, you know, here it says um, Becky Park on Poshmark. But this mug and this one, this one says sip with me. These were designed by my very good friend Fiona or Fee as she goes by. I met her on Instagram during a listing challenge that I hosted like three years ago, I wanna say. And to this day, we still talk and keep in touch. She's an amazing artist. She's just like an amazing, I don't know, she just has like a beautiful mind and she's able to like come up with amazing ideas for businesses and she's very entrepreneurial, but also just very artistic. Um, these are the only two like merch type things that I sell on my website. And to be honest, I don't make any money on these. In fact, I kind of feel like I lost money on this one, maybe just like a few cents. I do need to raise the price of the mugs. I just feel bad because I don't want people to pay like a ton for a mug when they could go to, you know, to Goodwill and get a mug for like 
$3. So I, I don't know, like I, I do want to keep carrying them. Maybe I'll just raise the price by like a dollar so I don't lose money next time. But, um, I just really love the fact that I was able to collaborate with Fiona and she was able to design something so beautiful for me. Um, but that's what Niz got. So Niz, thank you so much for purchasing a mug from me and for your support and just for even like visiting my website. You're amazing. And if you guys do want to check out my website, it is literally just shopbeckypark.com. I have some amazing thrifted goods that I put on there. Only my favorites. I'm not putting, you know, my like Greg Norman stuff on there. It's only like the cream of the crop, the stuff that I think is really, really cool. So um, thank you, Niz, for your support. And those are my sales for the week. So let's talk about my numbers. On Poshmark, I sold 12 items for a gross sales amount of $342. That felt amazing because in weeks prior, Poshmark had been awful. However, Poshmark is going to once again be awful in future videos. <laughs> like there's one week where I sold two things on Poshmark. It's kind of wild. And I feel like I've been hearing on Instagram, especially from a lot of people that Poshmark has been really rough. Like super bad, almost as bad as when they tweak the algorithm. Remember when they like changed the algorithm so that like your items were found best if you just put in like cute top or if you just put like made well dress and didn't have descriptive words like the shorter the listing title, the better. I mean, they said that since then they've gone back to the original algorithm and the original way that search was, but I don't know, it's definitely, something's happening. Like it's it's rough out there, which is why I'm really glad that I crossed list to a bunch of different platforms and don't only sell on Poshmark because it's just not reliable. For me, I use a program called List Perfectly to cross list. It is the only cross listing software I have ever tried, but because it's so good, like I have had no reason to try any other cross listing softwares. And if you are like experiencing some rough times on Poshmark as well, I definitely encourage you to try out other platforms. I I suggest eBay first, um, but I do think using a tool like List Perfectly to help you cross list is going to keep you sane and help you cross list much faster than if you had to do it manually. So I will put a link down in the description below and my coupon code if you want to try it out for 30% off your first month is simply Becky Park. Let me know how it goes and if you have questions about List Perfectly, let me know too. But I had a gross sales amount of $342 on Poshmark. Once you factor in their fees and any shipping discount that I offered, that total drops to $281.65. I had $44.01 into those 12 items. That was my cost of goods. And so my net profit for the week on Poshmark was $237.64. On eBay, I sold six items for a gross sales amount of $200.79. Once you factor in eBay's fees, that total drops to $166.46. I had $18.59 into those six items, and so my net profit on eBay was $147.87. I had one kid is in sale, that Eddie Bauer jacket, so my gross sales amount was $20. Once you factor in shipping and kid is in fees, that total drops to $11.07. I had $0 into that item because I got it for free, and I made a net profit of $11.07. Seven cents. I had one Depop sale as well for $34. Um, once you factor in shipping and Depop's fees, that total drops to $21.07. I had $4.99 into that sweater, and so I made a net profit on Depop of $16.08. So in total, I sold 20 items for a gross sales amount of $596.79. Once you factor in shipping and fees, that total drops to $480.25. My total cost of goods for the week was $67.59. And so my net profit for the week was $412.66. In the month of February, it was a rough month. And to be honest, March was even rougher. But in the month of February, I made a net profit of $1,322.05. You know, February was a month riddled with things like going on cruises and COVID and getting ready to move. So I'm not surprised that it was rough. And March, I'm not surprised was rough either, given everything that happened in March. Um, but hopefully things are looking up in April. They already seem to be. Um, just even these last two days, I had some really great sales days. 
Hopefully that continues, but that's the thing with reselling. You can't always predict what's gonna happen. You have to expect a lot of this kind of action and I'm okay with it. So that is everything that sold for me in one week. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button so that YouTube knows this is a good video. And I as YouTube should tell other people about this video. That's what happens when you like a video. That's what you know message you're sending to YouTube. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.